Hi, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. I thought I'd have a chat to you tonight about engaging a builder. And sometimes, if you're just doing a small renovation, you can actually get a quote from a builder and get them to do the works for you. Sometimes you might just get a quote and they start doing the work and then suddenly they start charging you for extra things or suddenly you find out you, you're not getting what you expected or what you paid for. One of the ways around that is obviously to have a building contract in place when you agree to go ahead. The good thing about a building contract is that it outlines exactly what you're going to get. There's obviously some, some legal frameworks around preparing a building contract. And the other thing with a building contract is once you've signed a building contract, legally everything after that, if there's any changes after that, should be documented by something called a variation. So a variation just means there needs to be agreement from both parties. Yeah, even if it's just changing the colors of something or you know, obviously if it's changing the price of things, people just sign off and make sure everyone's happy with it. So anything up to the contract being signed, you know, you can go backwards and forwards and change your mind on whatever you want. But once you've signed the building contract, then that's pretty much locked that into agreement and anything after that has to be signed off and agreed. So the reason why $12,000 is a really important number, um, this is particularly for, for Adelaide in South Australia, is that... Um, when, if, a, if an agreement is for less than $12,000, there's no legal obligation for you to have a, a building contract in place. So, so there is no obligation then for them to actually, for anyone, to be really clear what you're gonna, what you're gonna get, I suppose. And the danger of that is, you know, you're opening yourself up to plenty of things going wrong down the track in the fact that you, you know, what you expect you're getting, it might not be what your builder's expecting you're gonna get, and then you end up with arguments down the track. So. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, if if the contracts, go, if your agreements for for works is going to be over twelve thousand dollars, then legally you have to have a building contract in place, and then you have all the legal protections behind all the requirements of what's involved in a in a in a building contract. The other thing to bear in mind too is if it's over twelve thousand um, dollars, and you need development approval from from council approval, essentially, then your the the builder also has to have something called professional indemnity insurance. What that does is this covers you in case the, the builder dies or they go bankrupt or they, they disappear, they do a runner. And so what that covers you for, if they get halfway through the build and then they, they do a runner or they die or whatever, then the insurance is then going to cover you for to get the, the you know to cover you for any losses so far and also help you to be able to find another builder to finish that off essentially. So just understand, so if you've signed into a, a, an agreement where it's less than twelve thousand dollars and there's no building contract in place and then that that um, builder decides to do a runner or they, they die or, or disappear or whatever, then you've got really no legal protection in place because you don't have the insurance to try and cover you. So, But if it's over $12,000, you have a contract in place, legally they have to have a contract in place and if they don't, obviously they're breaking the law. Legally they also have to have um, professional indemnity insurance to cover you if if they do a runner or they, they go bankrupt or something. So. One one caveat to that is, if it's over twelve thousand dollars, but it doesn't require planning approval or council approval, then they're not required to have professional indemnity insurance. So you're not covered in that case. So so if the builder does do a runner, then unfortunately you, you may not be covered. So so that's just something to bear in mind, something to think about. Um, and then it's just probably more applies to you know renovations. You know, if you're building a house, it's not going to be for more or less than twelve thousand dollars. It's going to be a lot more than twelve thousand dollars. So your responsibility then, and, and also you're going to need council requirements and all that sort of stuff. So if you're building a house, you definitely need to have a building contract in place. You definitely need to have professional indemnity insurance and all that sort of stuff. But um, but it's more about for small-scale renovations. That's why, you know, my advice to you, if you can, try and get some sort of really clear written agreement on what you're actually getting from the from the tradies. So, so it's agreed up front. So you don't end up with the arguments down the track of, hey, this is what I expected and this is what you're giving me is totally different things. So hopefully that's made sense. Hopefully you liked what I had to say. Hopefully it's going to save you some hassle down the track. I know it's definitely saved me some hassle um, when I'm dealing with tradies. So yeah, you know someone doing a renovation, then perhaps you want to share this link through to them and hopefully they'll get some benefit as well. And if you've got something you'd like me to talk about in a future episode, then put a comment in the comment box. I'm happy to talk about anything you'd like to chat about in regards to property. And um, yeah, I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Bye for now.